and hello. You're looking at the uh, Arbicad welcome screen, which should appear after you run the Arbicad software, having uh, installed it onto your computer. Um, you will see a series of videos. These videos get updated uh, from time to time, so it's well worth uh, just checking these. There's here only four at the moment, um, but there will be new ones added in uh, continuously uh, or updated versions of these happening as well. It's also worth checking what version you're currently running because by selecting the latest uh, version, uh, or at, le at least this particular link, you'll be taken to a web page where you can uh, download the latest version of the software. Uh, at any stage, of course, you can contact our tech support line. This page is uh, dynamic, so it will update um, from time to time. We'll actually make an update for it from uh, you know, one period to another. And uh, so I would suggest you probably leave it running rather than unchecking this. But if you don't want to see it at all, just uncheck this and close it. Then next time you run the software, this won't appear anymore. Okay, we're assuming that you are running the software uh, at the moment at least on a Windows machine, but on a Mac will be pretty much just the same thing. Um, you've got the work plane in the middle, and right bang in the middle of the work plane is known as 00. zero. It's important, especially with um, tree data, that eventually we try and bring as much of the information uh, that we've got that could be a million miles away we actually bring that information roughly to the zero point here because the display of that information on a CAD program uh, looks neater when it's closer to the origin. So we'll discuss that a little bit uh, later. I'm sure you've gone through some of the tutorial material to understand the various uh, tools. All of the tools across the top, so all of these across the top are general purpose drawing tools. They are not specific to the task of an arborist. Um, these are all general CAD drawing uh, operations. It's the toolbar on the left that has the arborist's specific tools in it, but you'll need to know these first in order to uh, fully appreciate what to then do with these. And your training material will help you do that. Under your help um, button, you will see that there is a cheat sheet available, which will open a series of shortcuts uh, and it's well worth printing the cheat sheet. Let's click on that for the moment. So you've got a series of shortcuts on here. It tells you, you know, that if you press Control and drag, uh, then you'll be able to copy something. If you press Control X, you'll be cutting something or deleting it. So all of these are very, very useful. It helps you to understand what the cursor snaps um, are all about and uh, what they really mean. And if you hold the Control key, uh, it disables those snaps various little aspects we would heartily recommend that you print this out and keep it close by especially when you're just learning the software so let's just close that for a moment and also under the help menu uh, you will see there's a get help button the get help button will actually take you to our arbicad support page um, so here it's just giving you the contact details so it's jumped you into our cad international contact area you can either choose the chat with us or you can call us on the phone or you can send us an email. Um, it's uh, whichever way you like really, but it's just a, a shortcut to knowing where to, where to find out all the information. Uh, if you're in the UK, then use our UK phone number. If you're in the US, obviously use the US number and so on. I'll just move that out of the way. And again, under the help menu, you'll see the welcome screen, which we've just discussed already. Uh, we have a share my screen option. if you are getting supported by us and you are asking us to help you, we will often ask you to share your screen with us so that we can see what you are doing. So we'll be asking you to go to the help menu, select share my screen, and this will bring up a program normally called Team Viewer. And at the moment I've actually got Team Viewer already running and it's noticed that. Um, so I'm just going to show what it looks like and Team Viewer will pop up and you'll be able to see the team viewer information for your particular machine and you'll give that information to the support desk and they will assist you um, to um, help you with whatever problems you might be encountering. Okay, this allows you to check for the updates and this is what you must do if you are moving your license from one machine to the other. You must deactivate your license first um, and I'm not going to do that on this machine obviously uh, but you would deactivate your license and then you'd be able to move that license um, across to another machine. Uh, also at the about here, it will tell you what version of the software you are currently running. 
and you can see that I'm on uh, a June 25th, 2018 version of Arbicad, and uh, that would currently be the latest version that we have uh, just prior to making this video. Okay, so also in the folders of your machine, and I'm just going to go to the folders here, and I'm going to go to my uh, C drive. So in my C drive, I'm going to go to users, I'm going to go to public, I'm going to go to Arbicad, and there is in Arbicad a section specifically devoted to training. And if we go on the training folder, you'll see that there is a beginner's course. Now this is the course that you should be following as a new person using the software. And all of the other files here are files that you may be using whilst using this particular course. Not all of them, but some of them. So if you double click on this particular file, it will open and it should open right at the beginning, but it hasn't at the moment. So I'll just go to the beginning. It will open this particular course. So the Arbicad V7 Beginners course. And today we're going to work roughly through this course um, and you'll be able to essentially follow me. I'll be using this on one screen looking at it and I'll be showing you how to actually do the, uh, the items on the course. Read the material. It's important to read the material. Okay, we haven't really added much extra stuff in here that you don't need. This is a very concise um, piece of information and uh, without it you will get lost very, very quickly. So even as simple as you know how to look at the menu, knowing that the top row of the icons in your menu are called parents and they activate the children underneath. So you have to pick, say, a circle and then that will activate the circles underneath. And I'll show that to you briefly. But you know, do follow what's written in here. Try desperately not to jump ahead. The steps for creating the typical Arborists report are really only four major steps. You'll be preparing the information. You'll be producing the, uh, the drawing. You'll be adding your tree protection information. And then you'll be paperizing it, we've called it. Uh, basically, you'll be adding some annotations and texts and some schedules and your title block and so on. And then you'll be sending it off to your printer. So they're the four steps. So you'll notice they all begin with P. So these are what we call the four P's. And that's what we'll be looking at today. Okay, so let's head right into this prepare. I'm going to drag this over to the other screen. And uh, very from time to time, I'll be pausing the information um, so that I can read it and then continue on with you. Now, before you start a job, you'll need a couple of things. You'll either need a base plan that you have brought in from uh, your architect or your surveyor or your builder. And that will come in the form of typically uh, an AutoCAD DWG file. And if that's the case, you would go up to File and you would select, uh, say, I want to import the DWG file. And you would find that particular file. Now, in my case, I have got that in my computer. And in your case, it will be the same for the moment, but it'll be under here. Again, same place as we were looking at before. C drive, users, uh, public. Arbicad v7 in this case and right down here under training we have got our base plan so in this case that's the one you would choose for the actual training video itself and we would open that up here okay and the base plan has come in and we'll just discuss we'll, I'll show you that I was zooming out by the way with my mouse wheel and you can see there's a bit of extra data over here a few extra bits and pieces that perhaps we don't want this will be the the drawing that we'll be actually working on but I may as well show you, and I'll just move this to one side, how it's often done without um, a DWG file where, and I've got a, um, an image here, basically it's, this is just a Google map of uh, an area. What would normally happen here is you try and zoom in as far as you can to get the closest possible um, representation with the sharpest amount of you know, pixels, the, um, the, the sharpest sort of line you can get you would use whatever method you could to cut that. And on Windows machine, there's a thing called the snipping tool. And you can create a new snip. And you would generate your snip. And let's say this was the region that we wanted. I want to snip between here and here. And I'll just capture that. Now, this would be much better if this was closer up. Um, but you know, this might be as good as it gets. And this is all we've got. And I'll go let go. And now this gets captured. 
what I would then do is I would save this and I would save this as my uh, Arbocad, Arbocad capture. Okay, and I'm going to just drop it at the moment on in my pictures folder. Actually, no, I'll put it into my documents folder. And um, yeah, I'll just leave it in Arbocad capture and I'm just going to go save. So that image is now in Arbocad capture and I can use that elsewhere. I'll just shrink that now, move this away onto the other screen. And let's import that image or insert that image into our drawing. We can ignore this now. We don't need it. I'm actually going to throw all of this drawing away. Um, so I'll just select, actually, I'll just say a file new. So I don't want to save it. So we'll start here and we'll place using this tool. So it's the little attachment tool because it's a picture that we are attaching. And we'll go off and find the image that we just captured. In fact, I've actually got one here. So there's one, there is a sample image in the, uh, in the system for you, which we could use. Um, it would be nothing to stop us from using that image. Um, it's exactly the same concept as the one I was using, uh, although it's probably a better quality. It looks like it's come from uh, a bigger screen capture. Well, yeah, let's just open this one. So if I go OK to that, all right, and I'll pick a point somewhere here. It doesn't have to be right on the middle, but close to it's good and just drag it out. I have no idea how big this is going to be, and this is one of the good things to discuss about this. I've now got that image on my screen. I can roll in and out with my mouse, and I'll need two points that I absolutely know the length of in order to make this picture the right size. Because at the moment, if I was to draw a line over the top of this, and I better change the colors, so I'll come down to here to colors, I'll mark it in um, red, and I'll make a fat line, so I'll choose my heavier line weight, say a one millimeter line, and I'll draw a line, let's say the length of this building. So let's say it's the only thing we know about this building is its length, or about this drawing is its length. And I go to that point there and I click, and I double click on the line, it will tell me how long that is. Now that's only 906 millimeters, which isn't enough. So I'm gonna make an assumption here, we're just gonna make up a figure, but you would have to know the uh, the distance. So let's assume that the distance of this here is, and I'm looking there, oh, let's look at that and say it's about 45 meters long. So I'm going to suggest that line should be 45 meters long. So in order to scale this entire drawing, I'm going to select the entire drawing. Okay, I'm now going to use transform and scale. I'm going to say I have two points, one at either end of the line that we just drew, and I know that the length of this is supposed to be 45, and we're working in millimeters, so I want one, two, three, zero, so 45,000 millimeters. I don't want any copies. I don't want this one here to be a small one. I don't need it at all. I'm just going to make this one directly um, uh, grow to a larger size. I'm going to select OK, and I'm going to follow the prompt, which is something you should always do, and it says up here, locate the start of the line that defines the scale factor. Well, the start of the line, you'll notice my cursor here. I'll zoom in. You'll notice my cursor. It's a diamond there. I don't want it to be a diamond. I want to select the end of the line. So in order to select the end, you'll see as I come towards the end, it changes to a square. Bingo. So now I'm attached to that end. Following the cursor, locate the end of the line. So I'm going to say the end is here. And then it says, locate the center of the scaling operation. Well, basically, it wants to know, where am I going to blow this thing up from? I'm going to come down to the lower corner, roughly, and just click here. And the whole thing has been blown up to the uh, upper, up and to the right by the size that I've specified. So that if I was to double click on this line now, the little red line, it will show up as being 45 meters long. So now I would feel confident at least reasonably confident that this is the right size. It's always best to have two points as far apart as possible to minimize the problem of, um, like if that was 45 and a half meters and I've drawn it 45, then the whole drawing will be out by some variant. But that is also a way that you can check measure um, between trees. So it may be, for instance, that you know the distance between two trees on this particular site. And you can check that as well. So again, it'll be rough in the case of an aerial photograph because they're not specific. But let's assume we had a distance between here and here. Okay, you can see there where I'm moving, I'm getting a little readout. So I'm about 22 meters 
between these two trees. And if I click, I can say, yeah, looks about right. Just double click on it to check. Yep, 22.785 uh, meters. So you can use this as a checking tool uh, just by drawing a line. And you can also use it to help you when you scale this whole thing up. So that's how you would work with um, an image. It's no different working with an image really as it is working with um, a CAD file. The only difference is how it appears and the fact that you can't really edit uh, much within this image. All you can do is lay your work directly over the top. The only real editing you could do is by using what's called the whiteout tool. So here we've got the whiteout tool. And this allows you basically to click an area. So I might want to white out this corner block. I don't want to see this corner block here. So I've clicked there. When I've finished, I right click and it says, what do you want to do? Either undo what I've been doing, quit altogether, continue on because I really haven't finished or I'm finished and I hit done. And all that's really happening there is that I've actually got a white surface, which I've just selected, sitting over the top of it. So all the whiteout does is really lay a white panel over the top of the area that you wish to uh, obscure. But of course, you could do that around the entire drawing if you wanted to. So with that in mind, um, also something well worth considering is, and I'll just delete this one, I'm selecting it, and I'm going to press the trash can. Um, one thing to remember when you're out collecting data for your trees, you've got tree data to collect here, but wouldn't it be awesome, and it's the right thing to do, is to collect some other more solid point on the drawing. So whilst you're out on site, make sure you take maybe the corner of this roof or the corner of this building or um, a particular point on, a, on the road or somewhere on the car park, any basically any two datums that you could then snap to in the future. And you'll see why when we bring in the tree data and try to lay that tree data over the top of our CAD drawing, because we would be doing exactly the same if we were laying it over the top of this drawing. So let's go back to our tutorial, which is based on the CAD drawing. So I'm going to import that CAD drawing yet again. Import the DWG file. And the reason we're doing this mostly with the DWG file is because that's the more complicated one. Um, it's more difficult to work with a CAD file than it is to work with a simple image. So I'm going to go back into where I was previously, uh, which was, again, you might remember, the C drive, users, public, Arbicad, training, and in this case, the training base plan. OK, and we go open. It will throw this one away. It will bring in the new file. The first thing you'll notice is that there is this material up here which you do not need. Um, so we need to get rid of certain parts of the drawing. Um, this is the bit of the drawing that we do need. By the way, to, to scroll around, I'm pressing down on the mouse wheel as if the wheel was a button, because it is a button, and I'm just moving my mouse around. And this is called scrolling. Okay. If I roll my mouse forwards or backwards, then I am zooming. Okay. And I can zoom in as close as I want to get. Okay. You can zoom in as much as you like, and you can zoom out as much as you like. All right. And you'll notice that the imagery will disappear and reshape itself depending on where you're zooming in and out. And sometimes on slow machines, that can take a few seconds to, uh, to happen. What normally occurs is that you end up with a drawing here with too much information on it. And what we need to do is remove that excess information. I'm just referring to uh, my other screen here. So what we're going to do is um, convert this base plan for use with Arbicad. So I don't want to draw directly on top of this. It hasn't got the right layer structure. Um, it's just not really what I want to do. So what I really want to do is um, obviously zoom in and out. Uh, there's a zoom fit tool too, by the way. If I hit the zoom fit tool, it will squeeze the entire drawing into here. Sometimes the zoom fit tool means that your drawing seems to disappear altogether, but it'll be there somewhere. And that can be quite challenging. And uh, you can always um, get us to, uh, to assist you with that. Um, there are a couple of tricks on how to, uh, how to do it. It happens because the person who sent you the file has got it zoomed out so far 
like that, that it becomes just a dot somewhere. And that dot could be down here in the lower corner, it could be up here, it could be so far away that it almost disappears altogether and you can't see it. Uh, another way to use this zoom fit command isn't to click on here, but to just double click on the wheel. And that does exactly the same as the zoom fit command. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, use um, the scroll. Okay, so this is the scroll. So holding the window down, we're moving it around. Okay, and this other one we use a lot is called zoom window. So this is the zooming functions. Click on it and then say, okay, I want to zoom in between here and here. And you can zoom in, click, click. And you're zooming in, click, click. Okay, so that's the process of zooming, you know, step by step to a specific area. Um, so again, double click the wheel and you zoom back back out again uh, to, to where you need to go. All right, next step. Uh, oh, there's an undo, there's a zoom previous option as well. So we go to the zoom tools. You'll see here zoom previous, which takes you back through the various zoom states that you were in before. And that can be quite a handy tool as well, especially if you've got completely lost and you were, uh, but you had at one stage a really great spot uh, to work with. Anyway, I'll just zoom fit to there. All right. Also, um, if you are used to scrolling in and out, okay, differently to the way this works, you can choose the tools here and you can reverse the action of the wheel on there. So, you know, when you zoom in, uh, it might be rolling away from you. It's just up to you how you prefer to, uh, to run that. And I'll cancel that out again. Okay, so that being done, we're now going to edit the base plan. So zoom fit, I'm going to right click a couple of times just to make sure that this is green up here and it says select command or entities. I could press the escape key, that would do the same thing. And basically what it means is, I'll zoom out just a fraction, what it means is, is that I don't have any command active at the moment. So it will allow me to pick things, I can select things. And what I'm going to do is firstly select from left to right. So I'm moving from the lower left to the upper right to select. I could also move from upper left to lower right, it doesn't matter. And it will select everything that I've got inside the box. So these items that are pink are now selected. What can I do once I've got that selected item is I could press the rubbish bin and it will delete those objects. I can also just press the delete key on my keyboard. But now that those objects are gone, when I press the zoom fit, I'm now leaving all that stuff behind. It's fitting what's left. And this is what's left, this drawing here. So if you didn't want to delete that, so let's just zoom out a little bit here. If you did not want to delete that object that I just deleted, you can hit the undo key and that will bring it back. So you can see very quick and easy. The other way to capture things, and this is probably a better way right at the beginning, is to, from right to left, drag around the area that you wish to keep. So what it, this will do is instead of it capturing this information uh, that I'm putting a box around, it's capturing everything outside the box. So when I let go of this, bingo, it's caught this again because it's outside of the box that I drew from right to left. And again, I'm going to delete that information, press zoom fit, and I'm back in action. So that's the right to left uh, option. And again, I've, as I say, I've zoomed fit. I'll right click a few times, make sure I'm out of, the, uh, out of any command. And I'm now going to select certain elements. So I want to select things that are all the same uh, to get rid of. Now, in this particular case, I may not want this roof line. And you'll notice this roof line is made of a dotted line. Can you see that these lines are dashed? Not when you select them, but before you select them, they are dashed. Now, that's known as a line style. If I want to get rid of all the roof lines, I could individually go click and I could hold down the shift or control key and I could add to my selection because I'm holding down the shift or control key. And I can also unselect again. But that's going to take a long time to go around the drawing. It's much easier if I just right click on one of these lines. This one will do me, this one here, and I'll zoom a bit closer. Right click on it. This time I'm going to say select all the same line style or all the same style and it will go away and it will find and you can see all the pink lines all the pink lines of the roof they are all the roof lines because they were all the same line style 
And again, once you've got them, you can press delete or hit the trash can and those lines have gone. We can do exactly the same uh, with dimensions. If I right click over a dimension, I'm going to select not the same style this time, but the same entity type. So it's going to pick all dimensions because dimensions are not the same as trees and they're not the same as arcs and they're not the same as curves. They are dimensions. And so that's called an entity and we are going to pick all the same entity type, which is that. So it's now picked all the dimensions in the drawing, which I don't want anymore. So again, I'm going to throw those items away. Press the trash can. And you can start to see that the, the drawing is getting cleaner and cleaner and cleaner as we go. So this time I'm going to pick the contours. So you can see these contours. Now these are curves. Yeah, so these are curves and these curves, even though I, they're all, all the contours are curves, I don't know that there might, uh, might not be any other curves in the drawing and I don't want to collect things I don't want. What I can do is double click on one of these, being careful not to click on the boundary here. So I'm just going to double click on this curve. This will show me things about it. It tells me that it's a particular color. It tells me what line thickness it is. But this is the one I'm interested in here. It tells me that it's on a particular layer, layer number eight called contours. I'm reasonably confident that all of the contours that I don't wish to have in my drawing, so uh, I know I don't want them to display, I'm pretty confident that they'll all disappear or be selected when I pick up uh, things that are all on the same layer. So I'll hit cancel for that. I might just right click then over one of the contours and this time I'll select all the same layer. And correctly, all of these lines, these pink lines, you can see they are all contour lines and yes, I want to get rid of them and I'll hit them in the trash can. So doing that, you can sort of see how simple this whole process is. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very simple process. Okay, so what we don't need either is we don't need all these extra bits in here. So these are all objects. So all I'll do is click on each object, holding down either the shift or the control key, and I can pick each one of these individually and say, look, I don't really want all this stuff. It's, it doesn't embellish my drawing at all to have these items in the drawing. And whilst I'm holding down either the shift or the control key, I'm adding more and more items to my selection. Now it may be that I've selected this bath and I go, you know what, I'll leave the bath in. I can just reselect it and it just deselects the fact that I've selected it in the first place. So I'll just leave the PC items, I'll remove the cars, we'll leave the sinks and basins and the kitchen, I'll leave all that in place. And once I'm happy with everything I have selected, I can then come over here and press the delete key or the trash can and those items will delete as well. I could do exactly the same for all of these bits of text. All right. At the moment, I think I'll just leave them in there and I'll probably leave the trees in here, even though there's a good chance that whoever drew this, could have been the architect, um, hasn't necessarily got those trees in the correct spot. But that's not a big deal for me just at this moment in time. So your cleaned up drawing should look just like this, okay? Uh, you know, approximately like that at least. What we now have to do is scale this as we did earlier with our little image we've got to make this the right size now you'll notice we've got a, a, a figure here we know that this boundary line should be 40 meters um well, roughly 40 meters let's double click on it and see what it is well it's not is it it's nowhere near that amount so we want the whole thing to be blown up to 40 meters uh, and 80 uh, millimeters so what i'm going to do is we're going to select the entire drawing and I'm going to drag a window around the bit that I want, want to select. I could have selected by just dragging outside here right to left and it would have picked everything outside. So that's just another way. And again, we'll use the same scaling command that we used with the image right at the beginning. It's transform and scale. It's two points and a length. The length in this case, just having a look at it, you may or may not be able to see that it's 40 meters. Okay. And 80 millimeters, so 40080. I don't wish to have any copies. I select OK. It wants to know where the start of the line is, so I'm going to pick this point here. It wants to know where the end of that line is. Now it's really hard to pick the end of this line. I don't know if I'm picking the tree or not, so I'm actually going to zoom really close. So you'll notice I'm in the middle of the command, but I'm rolling my wheel, and I want to make sure that I snap to here, so you can kind of see that's right. I'm getting either a little square or a cross, so I know that I'm on the end. I don't want a diamond or anything else, so I just come here and I go click. 
So that's the two points that it was asking for up here in the prompt area. And then it says to locate the center of the scale. And as per usual, I usually pick the lower left corner, roughly speaking. So I've noticed too, um, uh, <laughs> I've told you that I click in the lower left corner and I know the, uh, the book there is probably telling you to click into the middle and that's okay. It doesn't really make too much difference in this instance at all. So uh, you can see here though, that in the process of blowing up the entire drawing, I'll right click out of here, can you see that this line, which is the one we measured, is now the correct length, which is great. But I can also see that the text looks like it's actually kind of a bit, a bit weird. It's just not the way you would expect it to be. So what I know about this software is that if I right click on here, just as we did before, and we select all of the same entity type, it's gonna pick all the text in the drawing, which is great. And I need to modify this particular text because what's happened is it's actually blown the text up in both its height and its width relative to itself. And we don't want that to occur. We just want the, the, the width relative to itself to be the same as it was. So I'm now going to go up to the word options here, upper, upper left corner, choose options, choose text. And where the width is four times greater than it should be, I'm just going to either type in one or zero, both will work. Okay, so that's what I'm changing about this particular text. I'm just setting it to where it was originally and I'm going to hit OK. And all the text now has shrunk back to its original uh, proportion, as it were. But the rest of the drawing, at least we know, is correct and we are now ready to start to utilize this um, in, uh, you know, in our Arbicad. So what I'm going to do before we go any further though, is we're going to actually save this drawing away. And the simplest way to save is obviously to come up here to the word file and select save or save as um, and choose a place to save it. You can either go here, you can also go to this folder here and you can choose this option to save as or save. So they're both exactly the same. And you can also press control S for save on your keyboard. But let's choose save as. And always recommend that we just put it in a place that you will remember at the moment. I'm gonna put it into documents and I'll probably put it into, well, I don't have a folder for Arbicad and I would recommend, let's say we've got a client and this client's called Smith. Uh, let's create a new folder for Smith. So I'm just going to right click in this space, choose new folder, and it's created a new folder here. Obviously the word new folder is not a good name. I'm just gonna call this Smith. So this becomes Smith's job. And there's the Smith folder, so double click there. And I'm gonna give this particular um, file a name and we'll call it, and I think the training asks us to call it something specific. So I will call it the Arbicad Training Base Plan. Um, yeah, I think so. So I think that's probably, yeah, Arbicad Training Base Plan. So I'm gonna call it base, it's already called that there. So I'm resaving it um, under the same name and that will be fine. So that'll do me. I'm going to, oh, I'm gonna put plan and I'm gonna put the word edited so that I know that I've edited that base plan and it's gonna go into the word Smith or into the folder called Smith. If you look at the top of your screen, on a Mac you'll be looking in the middle, on a PC on the, uh, on the left here, it's telling you the name of the file in the top left hand corner. So you now know the file name that you're actually working on um, and you can see it all happening in there. What we normally like to do, rather than working on this drawing itself, okay, so this is a drawing that's come in from AutoCAD it has with it all its own AutoCAD type layers. These are not your layers. These are not the ones you probably even want to use. So we don't want that layer system and we don't want necessarily even their color system. Um, and sometimes their file will have rubbish in it that causes problems um, as you're drawing. So there's a better way to operate the uh, software and that's to copy the drawing that you have and actually place it in a brand new Arbicad file. So this is what we'll do. We'll select what we want to keep. So we grab that lot. We come up to the word edit and we choose the word cut or copy. Either will do. And I'll just choose uh, copy. And I'll pick a point that I'm gonna copy it by and I'll pick this lower left hand corner here. 
Although the, the prompt says pick some point in the middle, so I'll just pick a point in the middle of the drawing there, that'll do me. Pick it in the middle of the drawing. So I've now copied all of this information to what's known as my clipboard, okay? And I'm about to start putting it into a brand new file. So what I'm going to do is we're going to open a template. So I've right clicked at the moment, we're going to get rid of this. I'm going to select File, New from Template, because we actually have some templates in there which uh, become very useful. And here we have the Arbicad training template, which is in the Arbicad drawings. Okay, and we go open. And it gives us roughly a relatively blank drawing. It gives us a drawing sh title sheet, and it gives us an area that we can actually start drawing in, right? A work, what we call the working area. And we're going to paste the information there into, um, into this here. But before we paste, let's save this away now. So we're gonna go file, save as. I'm going to go into uh, Smith folder again. Um, this time I'm going to call it My Arbicad Drawing. My Arbicad Drawing. And I'm really just following the, uh, the tutorial. Uh, that's a, the name that they suggest you put in there. So I'm doing the same thing. My Arbicad Drawing. And I'm going to go Save. And so we've now got the two drawings in the Smith folder. And all I'll now do is, uh, oh, well, you'll notice too, um, that the top, that it's now called My Arbicad Drawing. So that's the file. We're no longer working on the original template that we just brought in. We are working on our new file called My Arbicad Drawing. Okay. And you'll notice two screens. I've got this view, or two views. I've got this view. This is known as a layout view. You can see here the word layout. And this is a model view. And this is the word top. So we're looking down on the model in the top view. This dotted line is an indicator of what is going to be visible inside this dotted line. So this dotted line here, the red one, in this template, this is how it's been set up, uh, gives me a bit of a guide. Anything drawn outside here won't show up in here. What we draw in here will show up over here, and uh, what we draw outside of this line just won't appear anywhere. So let's paste the drawing um, that we have in our memory, or in the computer's memory, back into the um, uh, in, into here. So we'll go up and we'll select Edit, Paste. Notice the shortcuts here. Control V is Edit, Paste. Control C is Copy. Control X is Cut. So these are stock standard um, you know, tools that, uh, that you can use. The Mac version is very slightly different, but almost identical. Uh, and you'll know the, difference, uh, the different keys for, uh, for your particular type of computer. So I'm going to get Paste. I'm going to follow the prompt. Select the position to paste the entities. Well, I'm going to the middle of my drawing to be roughly in the middle here. So I'm going to go click. And there it is. That drawing that I had previously is now located here in this new drawing. It's taken on the color scheme that I've currently got running in this particular program. And um, hopefully uh, it's all the correct scale um, and everything is, is working. And what does it say here next? Select delete the working area block of text. Ah, okay, yes. I can select this bit of text. We don't need it anymore. So we can press the delete key to delete that little bit of uh, text there. All right. What you will notice, um, certainly read through your, your view information in the, uh, in the tutorial. Um, my suggestion is we're going to ignore this particular view for the moment. So I'm going to maximize this view. The best way to maximize, you can either click on this little button here, but best way is just to come up to this little section anywhere along this bar, not up here, but just along the top here, just in this little section, double click, and it will fill the screen with the one view. If you double click again, it splits back again. If I was to double click on this one, it would fill up with this one. Double click again, and it comes back to the two. So I want this one to be the one I'm working on. So I'm in here, filled up with this area. Okay, so we've now got a single view um, sitting in that particular space, and we're going to move some entities um, on to what's known as the base plan. So all of these items at the moment are on different sorts of layers. This is on, curiously, on a layer called trunk circles. Well, it's clearly not supposed to be trunk circles. Um, this driveway is on a layer called fencing. Well, clearly it's not fencing. What I really want to do is select all of these objects that I've currently got here. And I want to place them on a single layer known as base plan. So I've chosen these items, put a box around them. I'm going to come down to my layers tab, or layers icon. I'm going to choose the base plan and make sure that the little dot's there. 
and I'm going to select OK. And the moment I do that, all of these elements are now sitting on the base plan. So even this tree is part of the base plan. So I know what was on base plan, all of these items, including this driveway, are all now on the base plan. Whereas previously they were on a whole range of other layers and that's not what I was asking for. So that's good. We've got them in there. Idea now is to press Control S on your computer to save what you've done so far or just press the save button and it's exactly the same that will update. Next step is to load some tree data. Now we've got to assume you've been out on site and you've taken some shots or measurements of the various trees that are on this particular site. In addition to that you've also taken a measurement of this corner and you've also taken a measurement of this corner. Okay, So you took a shot of these two locations and the reason you did that is because you don't know whether the plan you've got here is correctly oriented. Is it horizontal? Is it supposed to be at a slight angle? Which direction is north? Who knows? We've got no idea and for us it doesn't really matter. We just want to make sure that we can match them both up and this will be true too for if you had an image file from Google Maps or Near Maps or something. Okay, So work with me on this. So what we'll do is um, run Microsoft Excel uh, on our computers right now. I'm going to go to Microsoft Excel and we'll open up Excel and we'll have a look at the actual file that we want to see. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go browse. I'm going to go of course where we were always and where we've been going so far. C drive, users, public, Arbicad, training and we've got training data. Okay so this is the file I want you to look at. Okay, and again, this is the file that we talk about in the, uh, the training program. So we open this file and we'll have a look at what that is actually saying. I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, press control and just roll the mouse wheel as a zoom function okay, to get us in there. And you can see here that what we've got is northing. So this is our position north. This is our position east. So northings and eastings. So you'll need to have that correct. Okay, if you are going to be using northings and eastings. The height in the Z is the height of the base of the tree. So if you're working in a three-dimensional environment on steep slopes and you need to know the height of the base of the tree, you know, the AHD, um, the, the height data, you can put your AHD information in here. You will have an ID for your tree. Now that might be 001 or just start off as we've done with 1, 2, 3. We've also got site corner and site corner. So site corner A and B, which were the two points that we were talking about just a second ago. So this I think was A or B, I can't remember. So that'll be A or B and this other point will be A or B. Okay, these are the coordinates for those two spots and we've given them a description, called them site corner. Now obviously, and I'll just blow this up full size, okay, we don't have uh, all of the information, um, there's no trees there, so we don't need any information here. And uh, there was one particular tree, which coming back here, I've actually missed this particular tree when we were out on site. Okay, so you'll see in your training that there's a way to recapture that without revisiting the site. Uh, won't necessarily be as, uh, as accurate, but it'll be as accurate as the drawing that you've got is. Um, if you have canopy data, in north, south, east and west uh, measured in meters, enter it here because the newer versions of the software will automatically generate, uh, and I think that's coming soon, will automatically generate uh, the canopy for you. Um, put a comma between them, so in this case you know it's three and a half meters north, it's three meters in the south direction, three meters in the east and one meter in the west, so there's a comma that's uh, in between each of them. If it's a circle, if you don't put anything in there, if I put in four there, I'll end up with a four metre diameter circle. Okay, because it's going to assume uh, that that's the information I've got. If I don't have anything, it's not going to draw anything there either. This is to retain or not retain, and again in uh, coming versions, I'm not sure if it's in the one we've got running at the moment, um, it will draw a, um, a tree that is to be removed um, in a dashed line style instead of uh, in a solid line style. And you can have as many notes in here as you like, you can have as much information about this um, as you like, uh, depending on how you like to operate and how, how you like to work. But I thought it would be worth your while 
um, having a look at, uh, at what we had going there. Notice too, importantly, very important, the word data down here. Okay, the name of the sheet. So that's the name of the sheet. This is the name of the file, my Arbicad training data at the top here. This is the name of the sheet. The sheet name is important because we'll be referring to that sheet when we import this information directly into Arbicad. Okay, so have a look at your training. It goes through each of these items here, species code, stem code, or uh, sorry, stem diameter, trunk diameter, which is the uh, diameter at breast height. Okay, um, the stem diameter at the buttress. Okay, so we've got all of that information and we know what column these are in. So that's the important aspect to know that as well. So let's just shrink that out of the way. And we're back here. In order to get that information we were looking at into the system, we're now going to use the Arbicad insert tree from file data button. Okay, here we've got norming, easting, height, but there's nothing in here. Okay, so it's all the same kind of information we want to find, but there's currently nothing here. And so what we'll do is we will load it from a file. And luckily, this has been preset with the right name in it, and it's also got the right information here. So look closely at your training material to see uh, any information about this that you might want to uh, to add in here. Um, you can type new information in here, it doesn't have to be the word attribute, and column H for instance, if we look back at our Excel data, column H was the canopy. So I could actually put the word canopy in there. So that would be our canopy information. So I could type that in and column I was the condition. Okay, so let's go and put in here condition. All right, the rest I'm not sure about, um, but I'll leave them there anyway. I'll hit OK. It wants to know, well, what file are you working on? Well, yes, I am working on this one here, okay, which is in C, Users, Public, Arbicad, Training, and hit Open. And it populates this sheet with the information that we wanted. Okay, so it's not that difficult. It can be as simple as just pulling that information in. The hard part is making sure that you get um, the columns in the right spot and that you've got the items in millimeters, not in meters. Okay, so that's an important thing to consider. Again, read the information very carefully. Um, that information is important to you. All right, so having done all that, we've now filled our sheet up and you'll notice that there isn't any information about tree number four. What we're going to do is we're actually going to populate this information about this tree, okay, by clicking on a point on the map for tree four. Okay, so I'm just going to pick any one of these, it doesn't matter, okay, any, anywhere along this row is fine, it'll understand that I'm working on this row. And rather than loading it in from a file, we're actually going to locate it on our map. So this could be on, on our map um, that we were um, working on originally, if that was the plan we were working on, or in this case, I want to find the middle of this tree. And there it is there. I'm going to click there. And it has filled in the location of that particular tree. What I don't know though is, is that particular coordinate related in any way to the way these coordinates were captured? And I don't, I don't know that it was. I think it could be, it looks to me like it's a completely different orientation. But let's have a look. Um, and we might want to put in uh, a name for that. Um, let's look at making that um, an EU AC. Okay. And what else do we need to know? I need information. I'm going to type in that that's 600. And the other amount would be say 500 so this is information I've got and do I have canopy information uh, well no I don't have any canopy information at this time so I'm happy with all of that now what I'm going to do here is I'm now going to include the canopy information okay in uh, in my data should I need to have it I'm going to this is the information I'm including when uh, when we place the circles that are going to represent the trees and we're going to do that in a minute by hitting this insert button all right so in order to do that, all we do is select insert and we hit insert. Bingo. And all of a sudden, all of the information has been thrown onto the drawing. And you can see here, I'm just zooming out. And it looks like half this information is in the wrong orientation. I'm guessing that this sheet is 
located horizontally and that this information is located kind of vertically. So we'll need to make a change to that. Alright, so all of the trees are in the wrong place except for the one that we placed manually. Okay, so it knows that it's in the right spot. So I'd like to move the other trees, and by the way, this is point A here, and I believe this is point B down here. And so you'll see that on this drawing, I've also got a point A and a point B. We've got site corner here. You can just see that's a, the letter B there. Okay, and we've also, and you'll notice there's no tree there. The symbol for the tree is there, and we've also got A just sitting there as well. So you can see that that's A. But what I want to do is I want to take all of these trees. I'm actually going to grab everything. So I'm going from right to, uh, sorry, from left to right. And I can see that I missed the word site corner. So I'm going to hold my shift or control key and click on that word. So I'm capturing that as well. I want to cut this from its current position because as far as I'm concerned, relative to each other, these trees are correct. But relative to the drawing, they're not correct. So I'm going to cut it at point A. So I'm going to use Edit, Cut, or Control x on, on a PC. Notice my cursor is a little circle, which means I found the middle of this object. This is point A. And it's cut the information from the drawing now. So that all those trees have gone. And there's the other word, site corner, still left there as well. I've left that behind. I'll get, get to that later. And now let's paste it at point A here, because I know that this is, the, uh, this is the point that should be point A. So I'm going to use Edit, Paste, Control V, and I'm again going to come to this corner and go Snap. And there's my point A. Okay, so all of my trees are now sitting there, uh, but again, in the wrong orientation. They're all up, up around here. So how do I select these trees again, now that they're over here, and get them into the correct orientation? I think the best way to select these trees, knowing that they have all been grouped together, so if I double click on one of these, you'll see it's a group object, it's a group, it's been grouped. So all the circles and the plane and so on have all been grouped together into uh, into a particular object. So knowing that they are a group, and I don't think I've got any other groups in my drawing, I'm going to right click on one of these and I'm going to select all of the same entity type. And bingo, it has found all of the same entity. The only thing is, I don't want this particular group here because I know he's already in the right place. So holding down the control or the shift, I'm going to reselect him because I don't want him to be rotated down into the wrong spot. So now I'm going to use a rotate tool, this one here, and I'm going to use three points or an entity as my method of rotation. And importantly, I don't want any copies. So I'll make the copies zero. I hit OK and then I'll follow the prompt. It says locate the origin of the rotation. So I'm going to zoom into this. I'm going to snap to that point. So now that's the pivot point for my rotation. I'm going to find the other end of this. So I'm looking for point B now. And because I can't see point B anywhere right now, and I know it's in here somewhere, uh, where is my point B? I think my point B isn't seen, so I'll refresh the screen. Aha. So notice this one here. This is the refresh tool, basically. It refreshes the screen. And because these were off the screen at one point, when I've come back in again, they had disappeared. So I had to use the refresh. But notice I am still in the middle of doing this. So I am just following the prompt. So the other end, I'm going to wait for my circle. There it is there. And now I've got this object. I'm, I'm basically able to pivot the whole thing around. You'll see, too, I've actually captured a bit of text I shouldn't have. Not sure why I've got that. It's the garage text. Can you see the garage text there at the bottom? Doesn't matter. I'll leave that there at the moment. And then I will come here and I'll make this end click there. So now you can see I've got everything I need in the right spot. Okay. And I could just right click out of there to say, yep, I'm finished with that. I've got everything I need in the right position. What's become obvious, obviously, is this bit of text, which I don't need anyway. What is it telling me? Yeah, it's a concrete driveway. Eh, if I wanted to put it back, I can yeah, rotate it again, exactly the same as we just did before. Um, or I could just drag a copy of it over here. If I double click on it, I can actually, uh, oh, that's why it got picked up. It's been a group. That's interesting. 
I may as well show you this. If I don't want something to be a group, I can select it, knowing that it is a group. I can come up to my group commands and I can say ungroup. And now when I touch this, you can see they are two individual pieces of text. Okay, so that's all you need to know about that anyway. All right, so that site corner I don't need as a word anymore. That can go, I'll delete that. And that site corner, delete and delete it. So I've deleted the word site corner. There's a lot of text here that I probably didn't need to have, um, but it's still sitting there. But what I have noticed and what's really obvious is that these original trees that um, were sitting on the drawing are definitely not in the right place. I can see here that these trees under here really are way out of where they should be. So they look like they've been put in there by an architect. So how would I select that tree easily? Well, I'm pretty sure that all the trees on this drawing are actually groups, uh, or sorry, figures. So let's have a look at this one. I'll double click on this tree, you can see it. And yes, it's a figure. So it's possible <coughs> that all I'll need to do is right click on this one and select all of the same entity type. And by doing so, it's picking up all the figures. Trouble is, it's picking up figures that are sitting inside my own trees, these little symbols here. Um, but I'm confident it won't delete those when I press delete because they are part of my group objects. So these little symbols in the middle here belong to my TPZ group, as it were. So things I may not want to include in the delete. In fact, I may as well delete these now. I don't really need the sinks in here. I was left them in previously, but I could obviously reselect them and not have them delete. But anyway, I'm just going to delete everything I've selected. And it's telling me that attached entities were not deleted. Well, that'll be these little figures here. Okay, they won't be deleted. But the rest of the trees are. So that is the process for getting this up to uh, up to this particular point. From here, you will be putting in, um, if you've got a current version, uh, when you get the next version, you won't need to put in the canopies, but right now, you'll be able to put in the canopy information. So in order to do that, just follow the PDF information uh, from your tutorial, and uh, you'll be able to complete the entire course uh, in a very short space of time. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this has been useful to you. Certainly should get you up and running. And remember that we are always here uh, to look after your needs. So give us a call if you get stuck. And, uh, you know, enjoy Arbicade.